I'm back. Most of you didn't even know I was gone. But I hit 70 subs. I love all my subs. I love all 70 of them. So, I love you. Um, my first video hit 1K. Yeah. If your brakes sound like this, Kill yourself. No, I'm just joking, though. Yeah, first thing I did, I I lifted the car up. You know, I used a pump jack. Obviously, put it on a jack stand. Don't just leave it on the pump jack. And then I um, took the wheels off. I took the wheel off, and then you have the brake assembly. You know, before you even start to get into replacing all these parts, please do me a favor and just. Make sure that you have the correct parts to begin with. There's no point in going in and changing all this stuff out and then only to realize that you didn't even have the right parts to begin with. That's a waste of time. So there's four bolts in the back. Two of them are for the caliper body and then two of them are for the caliper bracket. The caliper bracket ones are bigger. They're 17 mil. The caliper body is the smaller ones at the, at, at the outer side. of. They're the ones that are gonna be smaller and they're 14 mil, I believe. Before I got into that, I just sprayed them down with penetrating oil. It's always good to do that, especially if you think a, a bolt is gonna be stubborn to get out because of rust and you know age and all that, whatever. So penetrating oil is good. I use that, you know, it breaks it down. And then I just used a long wrench just to crack it free. And then I took the rest of it out. Then I can take the caliper body off. So I used the flathead screwdriver, just shoved it in the, the little groove and whatever, the little space. Popped it open, took it out, and now you should really hang this because you don't want the brake line to be to be stressed or anything. But I just like found a little spot to like kind of put it on, so whatever, that's fine. You can see the brake pads, like there, there's like almost nothing left, you know. So I'm I'm happy this customer wanted to change their brakes because it's always good to see, you know, safety coming first, you know. And um, yeah, these brake pads they have these springs on. You want to make sure that you put these springs back on. These springs are very important for making sure that the brake pads are sitting correctly and that you know they don't make a lot of noise. So that's why this, these springs are usually there. I took the springs off. After that, I took the brake pads out. Jeez. And you can see here the comparison between the old brake pads and the new ones. Like, there is a huge difference. The rotor had two screws that were holding it in, so luckily they weren't hard to take off. These were actually like pretty loose, they weren't on there that tight. But if they're on there tight, you're gonna have to use something called an impact hammer. But I didn't have to use that, so I could just take them off with a Phillips screwdriver. I took both the screws out and then the rotor was free. I took the rotor off and then what you're left with is the wheel hub. On the wheel hub, the flat surface is what the rotor sits on, so you wanna make sure that's clean. This is where you start grinding down things and like making sure all the surfaces are clean for the new parts. I had an air powered grinder that I used. I uh, just put a soft disc on it and just grind it down the surface.
Also the caliper bracket, uh, I took off the shims. Underneath them it was pretty rusty so I grinded that surface down as well. Whatever area you're grinding down, sanding down, whatever it is, once it's at a bare, bare metal level, like where it's just bare metal, you want to put some sort of lubricant on, on metal because it's going to start rusting really fast. So I use anti-seize. The paste is really good, it's thick, it stays on there. Um, so I use that to coat whatever I'm grinding. So the wheel hub, coat it out with anti-seize. Don't be shy, put a little, put a generous amount on, you know? And then, um, so I lubricated the caliper bracket, the area that was uh, grinded down before. That's good to go, then I popped in new shims. You usually do get a replacement pair, so use the replacements, they're there for a reason. I looked at the new rotor. Now sometimes these rotors have a little bit of oil on them on the surface. So what you do is you just clean it down, put a little brake cleaner on them, and just take a rag, clean them down, take the oil off, boom. That's just so that they don't rust while they sit on the shelf. Put the rotor on. Uh, put the screws in. Um, put the Put the um, put the brake caliper bracket on. Then put the 17 mils in. Put the brake pads in. Make sure the brake pads are, are in nice. Put the brake pads in, put the springs in. Those springs. And when you put them in for, for this car, they want to they tend to push the, the pads apart. So you gotta make sure you're holding the pads while you put the spring in. So I use the channel locks and I push the piston back. You can then take the whole caliper body and you just put it back on and it's gonna keep the pads in place. But while you do this, you make sure that the springs don't move and they don't pop out of position. So once you do that, take your time, put it in. Then I put the 17 or the 14 mils in. At this point, I just have to tighten everything. There's a torque spec, but you know, tight is tight, right? Yeah. So now just use find the torque spec and uh, torque it to what the specifications are. And then at that point, you check everything. Check your work. Looks good. Looks way better than before. Looks like you actually have brakes on your car now. 
Now, I know there's a whole other side that you still have to do, but it's basically identical, right? Do the same thing on the other side, and you're pretty much done. But um, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I know I've been gone for a little bit, you know? I took a little time off, but I'm back.